Welcome to our webinar today, which is with our speaker, Sherry Brandel. She is going to come to us today. She's creating your signature look. Uh, Sherry is just one of those amazingly wonderful, stylish women. I have only just met her, but for those of you with first place, she told me that she used to lose, lead a first place for health group. So excited about that. Um, she's the visionary of Fashion Meets Faith, and she inspires thousands of women each year to new levels of confidence at conferences around the globe through her YouTube channel uh, and with a reassuring heart and effervescent spirit, which I can attest to, and she helps women see themselves the way God might. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Sherry. Hey everybody, so nice to be here with you. I am from Charlotte, North Carolina, so I am just grateful that I can get on a webinar and see you wherever you are. So it's very, very exciting. Well, I think what we're gonna start off with tonight is, well, we should start off with prayer. Can we do that? Can I bring us before the Lord and, and let's do that. So wherever you are, let's do that. Father God, we are just so grateful that we can come together from our homes, especially during this time of this virus, and just kind of forget about that for a little bit and have some fun together. Lord, thank you for each and every person who is here. And um, we're, just, we're just in awe of how you connect people. So we love you and we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So let's start with a poll, Helen, if we can do that. And so this is what I want to know, you guys. What are you wearing while you're sheltering at home? So pick one of these. Uh, most days I'm getting up, getting dressed, and even putting on some makeup. Or I'm wearing mostly yoga pants and t-shirts. Or three, PJs, baby. Or four, clothes. What are clothes? Which category do you fit into? All right, so go ahead and, and mark that. Oh my goodness, I am... Okay, I'm so impressed. All right, you guys, I, I'm sorry, but I have to take a picture of the answer. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna totally share that with people because though most of you say that your 48% said that you're mostly wearing yoga pants and t-shirts, 41% say that most days you're getting up, getting dressed and putting on makeup. Yay, that's awesome. That's incredible. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen if I can do that. And hopefully, here we go, gonna do this. All right, Helen, you might have to um, mute your video as well because I think you're the one that's showing in the screen instead of me, or spotlight my video if you can do that. Is that, are you able to do that? Okay, awesome. All right, you guys, let me jump us up here for a second. Let me get us here. Okay, great. Well, we are going to, I'm going to help you create a signature look and there are a couple of ways we're going to pass by this poll since we we already did that but um there are a couple whoa backing up here you know when you're trying to first get organized here there we go there are a couple of ways that you can create a signature style for yourself and there are some guidelines to, to dressing but I think one of the things that has happened in the world is that we have come to a place in our lives where sometimes we don't even know what to put on because the world tells us that we can wear whatever we want. And though that is true, as Christians, as I'm thinking that most of you are, um, we are called to represent Jesus even in our outer appearance. And so though we may not wanna wear whatever we wanna wear, the next issue is that sometimes we get to a place where we really don't know what to do. And so maybe we didn't have a parent who helped us learn how to dress. Maybe we relied on you know, friends in school and then we got you know, into the workplace and, and you know, relied on what the mannequins were wearing in the stores and, and we would buy that outfit and then we would go home and we'd put it on, but yet we didn't look like that mannequin. And so 
through the years, I've been in the fashion industry for a really long time. I've come up with some guidelines to help women just like you. And I, I don't know if there are any men on this, but mostly I speak to women. So um, to help women know how to put themselves together and feel better about themselves. Because really the ultimate goal besides representing Jesus well is to feel confident in your outer appearance so that when you do get dressed, you can really forget about clothes and do what God has called you to do. And so I understand that when you are in process of losing weight, maybe some of you are at your goal weight, maybe some of you aren't there yet, you're, you're working on it, it can even become more of a struggle because you're not ex exactly sure what fits, what doesn't. And so I'm gonna help you with a few things that you can do while you're losing weight or, and even if you're already there. So whether you, you're, you're there or you're on your way, I think these tips will help you. And so one of the first things that I instruct a client to do is, let's get here, my, my uh, you know how, there we go, is to really help define that signature look. So this is not how we wanna look. All right, so we might be looking like that at home right now, but it looks like a lot of you are not. But this is, this is an okay way to be at home, but not all the time, obviously, but it's not somewhere, some way that you wanna go out in public because when you, walk out of the room, when you walk out of your house, and, and I know we can't do a lot of that right now, but I want you to think of some words that when people see you, you want them to resonate with. So there are, I put up a couple, uh, two little screens here so you can see, look at these words, kind of just look and see, does something resonate with you? Because how you dress, just like in this last picture, when we saw this gal, we could see that, okay, if you think of words that come to mind when you see her, I don't know, maybe even put it in the chat. What do you think of? Let's do that. Go ahead and write in the chat. What do you think of if you, this woman walked in to, um, I don't know, to, the, to, the, to work, let's say she was coming to fill out an interview and she was going to fill out an application, but what do you think? What are some words that come to mind? And um, when, you, when you fill that out, like think about those words. I'm gonna try to look at this if I can. I don't know if I can see it or not. I wanna see what the words are. Doesn't care, sloppy, comfortable, very casual, relaxed, unprofessional. Yeah, especially if she was coming to fill out a job. Clueless, disinterested, except that her hair looks great. Yeah, her hair does look great. All right, tired, young. Yeah, you guys got it. Okay, so, so when people see you, believe it or not, they do, words come into their minds about you. Believe it or not, I think it was Forbes that said that you have seven seconds to make a first impression. And literally in seven seconds, when, the, when somebody sees you who has never seen you before, they make their mind up about you based on, just on your appearance. Unfortunately, it's based on your appearance. So what I help clients to do is come up with words, two adjectives and a noun that will help you and help my clients and help you to test your clothing purchases against and to test what it is that you put on your body against. All right, so here are some examples of some women in my VIP community. This, this afternoon, I asked them to put down what their, what their signature style statement is. And um, here are a couple of them. Classy, uplifting, trailblazer. Confident, joy-filled, facilitator. Here's an interesting one. There's a story that goes along with this one. Wealthy, elegant woman. The last one, joyful, vogue, pace setter. So my question to you is, what will yours be? What will your signature style statement be when you can really sit down and think about, huh, what kinds of words would I want to describe myself? Uh, I'll give you an example of the wealthy, elegant woman. About 10 years ago, I was helping a client shop. And when I, she hired me, I went to her house and she lived in a beautiful, like several million dollar home on the lake. And I got to her house and I met her and we you know, talked a little bit. Then we went into her closet. And when I looked at her clothes, her clothes 
didn't look like her house. Her clothes also didn't look like who she wanted to be based on our conversation together and the, the events that she needed to go to and the image that she wanted to portray. Well, she, I, I looked at her and I said, Robin, you are a wealthy, elegant woman. I need you to dress like that. We need to dress you like that. Well, she got so excited. She went on and told her husband when he came home, she said, Sherry said, I'm a wealthy, elegant woman. I need to dress like it. And he said, well, I'm a wealthy, elegant man. Can she take me shopping too? Because I want to look like that too. Well, fast forward 10 years, 10 years. And she came to an event that I do every year called Beauty Boot Camp. It's in, it's in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And women come together like no more than like around 40 women come together and, and it's, it's an amazing time. So you might want to check that out sometime, but we were defining the styles of people there. And we were doing this exercise last October. Well, Robin came to that. And when she got with her, with her small group and they were coming up with the words, she came back and she said, you know what? I'm because she was thinking maybe she was going to change her style statement because it served her well over these last 10, these last 10 years. But she said, you know, I'm going to keep it because wealthy doesn't mean to me what it used to mean. It means to me now that I'm wealthy because I have good health. I'm wealthy because I give away a lot to charity. And so she's using that same phrase, though it may mean different things to her. And so I'm just curious, what would yours be? So I actually have an activity that you can do, and you won't do it now, but it's something that you can do when we get off of this webinar that you can, you can check for yourself. So you can go to my website, and I'm going to come back to this in a minute. You go to fashionmeetsfaith.com, and right on the home page, there is a place for you to put your email in, and you can get a free wor worksheet on how to determine your signature style statement. And um, maybe if you'll go ahead, Helen, and put in the chat the website, that would be great, fashionmeetsfaith.com, and you guys can go grab that worksheet and work on it. But here's, I'm gonna walk you through what you're gonna do when you get the worksheet. So if you'll notice, you get a word bank, and I've, I've made these a little smaller for our PowerPoint here. So you get a word bank here, and you've got adjectives on one side, and you have nouns on the other. All right, and then over here, this is just kind of a, a, a worksheet to sort of do, sort of play with, all right? So maybe look, start down here at the bottom and fill in these words. Like, I want to be perceived as a, and fill in the blank. You can use these words or not, or even just think you know, your own words. I want to wear clothes that make me feel like what? I want to combine outfits that tell the world I am a what? I want to look in the mirror and see myself as what? And I say, I love these, these little trigger sentences because I think sometimes we've never put thought to this. We've never thought about how we want to see ourselves. And when you come up with this phrase, it's not something that you need to tell people about, like your family and close friends. It's not like you're going to advertise it on Facebook. I mean, if you want to, you can, but really it's for you to remember that you are fabulous, you are beautiful, and that you are a strong woman, and you are the words that you fill in the blank with. Okay, so let's look at the adjectives for a minute. Maybe you picked, okay, I'll tell you what mine is. So my signature style statement is dynamic, fashionable, and then I picked two nouns. And if you watch my YouTube video from last weekend, I explained all of this. So if you, if you love to watch YouTube videos, Style Tips with Sherry, you can go and I do a video every Saturday. But I explained on the video that I was a little, a little apprehensive about picking my nouns because I know I'm a confidence builder. So here's that. That's what I do. I help women to feel more confident. But I also wanted to be a powerhouse, right? And so it was like, I don't know. Should I? Should I? And so I picked two. So you can pick whatever you want and then look at your closet and think about the clothes that you have. Do they match up to how you are, descri are describing yourself? Do they match up to your new signature style statement. 
All right, so let's move on with that. And if you have any questions with that, go ahead and jot it down, maybe a little note on a notepad or if, if there's a way to put it in the chat that, that Helen can see it, but I'm gonna answer those questions at the end. All right, so let's move on to the next thing that really helps you with guidelines while you are, when you wanna look good. And I think this is one of the things that many, many people forget about. And it's knowing what colors look good on you. And there are some colors that look amazing on you. And you just have to really figure out what they are. And so I'm just going to show you an example here of some women. And if you just look at all the different kinds of hair and skin and eyes and, and coloring, they don't look the same, right? So why do we think that we can all wear maybe that same red jacket that's hanging on the rack because it's on sale, right? And we think, oh, I got to get that jacket. You know, it's a great price. But why do we think that we can wear it and then the person next to us can wear it as well? So, and we can't. There are colors that are going to make you look better than some other colors. And so I, the system that I use is called the color code system. And it's a system I developed about, oh, 10 years ago now. And it's based on the six dominant color characteristics. So I'm just gonna walk through with these ladies right here very quickly. Like these gals here, the, her, this one and these two are opposites from each other. She would be in the light category. She, these two would be in the deep category. Dark hair, dark eyes, brown eyes, lighter, darker hair. She has lighter hair up here. Now, it's not all just based on your hair color, but I did hair color for here and eye color, so it would be easy for you to pick it up. All right, here, these two are in the same color code category, and their category is called clear. Clear is somebody who looks like a snow white. Dark hair, light skin, bright eyes. Now, she doesn't have bright eyes, but she has a high level of contrast. So that's why we put her in here. Now, you don't have to know the rules. All you need to do is take the free test and figure out what colors you are. So you don't have to like go, oh, I gotta remember, what does contrast mean, all of that? No, I'm just kind of giving you an overview here. This gal down here is what we call a soft. She has a very small level of contrast compared to, to these gals right here. So let's say on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, she has a high level of contrast, dark and light against her, the hair and the skin. Her, her hair and her skin are almost the same color. So she has a low level of contrast. So for this gal, these two up here, we're gonna give them bright colors. And this gal down here, we're gonna give her more medium intensity colors. All right, so, and then we mark, we go over here and we've got a redhead and we have our silver hair gal down here. So she would be in the warm category and she would be in the cool category. And they, knowing your color code then moves you into what color neutrals look best on you, what color, um, what your pop colors are, what jewelry looks best on you and so forth. So because it's, it's it, it can be, I mean, I could, I could talk to you about color all day long because I think it's so important. Um, instead, after this, I'm going to give you the website where you can go take a free color test. But I wanted to show you examples of a couple of things. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now, here's what's interesting. They, when I found these pictures, they said, this is Faith Hill, all right? So this is Faith Hill without, like, wearing black. So she's a soft. All right, so a soft is the one who doesn't have a lot of contrast between her skin and her, her, her hair and her skin. All right, here you can see that she has no makeup on, she's wearing black. Here you can see that she has very dark lipstick on and a darker color. Here you can see she has a more medium intensity color on and lipstick that is more medium. Can you see how much more pleasing this is compared to these two? All right, now, you can go without makeup. She could go without makeup, but when you end up in the soft category, and if you end up in the soft category, black is taken away from you for your wardrobe. So don't freak out, because I know people love black, 
but black doesn't look great on some of you. And it's, it's, it's one of those colors that can be really, it can age you and it can make you, it can make you look kind of tired or sick. And I know when you're losing weight, one of the things that you will say is, but doesn't black make me look thinner? It does but so does dark brown. So does any dark color can make you look thinner. So we don't want to get just stuck on black. You want to find the neutral that's best for you and go with that. All right. So I just think this last color is so great on her. And then here's another example of a wrong and a right where you can see that this looks like the color was almost put on her, like it's sitting on her skin. Like look at the eyeshadow, the lipsticks, the color. Here you can see where everything looks blended and it coordinates. So when you get dressed and you put color on, your head between your, your hair and your face and your eyes, there should be, it should look like it goes together. There should be this connection, not where there's a head and a body and it's separated. So we want you to have be a complete picture of color. So whether you're in your t-shirt and yoga pants or whether you're going out to a business meeting one of these days, the color needs to blend, just like the colors that I have on. If I were wearing, I'm, I was looking around my office to see if I had a, a, a pink, but I don't have anything pink because pink doesn't look good on me. But if I had pink on, you could see the disconnect of what would happen here. I would have my red hair and then pink, and the two are like, whoa. So I want the same for you as well. All right, so you can go to a website called, w, it's www.colorcodequiz.com. And if you take a test, you're gonna put in your hair color, you're gonna put in your eye color, your skin color. And sometimes it's good to have somebody sitting next to you to help you pick out the color because I think sometimes we see ourselves differently or maybe have a mirror in front of you and pick the colors on the screen that most suit you. So let's say um, you're a blonde. Um, if you can, if you would look on and see, um, like when you see the blondes, if you're a blonde, go ahead and pick the blonde and not the, um, and then you'll go in and they'll have different colors of blonde. So make sure that you do that as well. All right. And then when you take the quiz, you're also going to get seven free virtual colors to keep on your phone. So there you go. All right, next, where do you gain your weight? All right, so um, let's take a poll. Are you ready, Helen? Okay, good. So where do you gain your weight? Mark it off. Belly, hips and thighs, bust evenly all over, or you gain in your belly and your hips and thighs? All righty. Okay, so 33% of you said belly. 11% uh, hips and thighs, a few in your bust, evenly all over 23%, and then hips and thighs combination, 32%. Okay, so you're pretty, that's pretty even, belly and hips and thighs. Awesome, great. Okay, so when you gain, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this. When you gain primarily in your belly, you are considered what I call a B body shape. B for beautiful, not B for belly, but B for beautiful. And so typically a B body shape has shoulders and hips that are the same, straight up and down, and you, and you don't have much of a waist because you gain all of your weight in your middle area, all right? So if you gain in your bust area, and there were only 2% of you that said that, um, you are what we consider, well, I call you uh, outstanding, so not overly endowed, but um, typically you are going to have, you're going to gain in your bust area and your tummy area. And then you typically have a flatter derriere, but you have really nice legs. All right. So you would be an O. A D body shape gains in her hips and her thighs, really for derriere, right? But um, I call you darling. So you're a darling for that. And then um, you a lot of times have more of a narrow shoulders and um, gain in either your and your your hips, your thighs, or your booty area in the back. 
And then, so you you carry your weight below the waist. And many times you have a smaller waist. You're the gals who can never find a pair of pants to fit both your waist and your pants at the same, your, your waist and your hips and thighs at the same time. It's always like ah, one or the other. And then if you're, if you're curvy and you gain all over, evenly all over, or maybe you're at your ideal weight and you really don't have any extra weight on you, then um, you're an X body shape. So your shoulders and hips are balanced. You have a, you have a waist and so you're very balanced. And so you can be a curvy X or you can just be at your ideal weight as an X. And then there were about 32% of you who said your combination hips and thighs. So what happens is, is you just want to, you would, you would want to dress your upper body. If you're, if you're a combination, you would want to dress your upper body for the B body shape, the beautiful body shape. And you want to dress your lower portion for the D, the darling body shape. And so there are many things that you can do to dress for your body shape, but, and, and we can't go into it all here because it would take forever. But if you have some specific questions, we can, I can answer those during the question and answer time. But the key to dressing, ladies, is that when, when, when you get dressed, is that you don't wanna bring attention to your challenge area. So if you gain in your belly, you're not going to wear belts because if you put a belt on over top of your belly, it's kind of like decorating the fluff, I like to say. And so you're going to be better with wearing a top on the outside, not one that's tucked in. For it, another thing is if you are a B or an O body shape, a V-neck is really great neckline for you because it 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 takes your upper body and brings the eye to the center of the body instead of the eye of the onlooker that is instead of being widened by your by your hips or by your um your shoulders if you've got like a crew neck on or or a neckline that's up here and if, if it goes straight out here, you're just going to look broader that way. And so there are all kinds of things that you can do to trick the eye for dressing your body shape. Key, key, key is to make sure that you have the right undergarments. Make sure you have the right bra, especially if you're, I always like to say, especially if you're an O body shape, but honestly, for any body shape. And for those of who, you who gain in your, in your bus line, and again, there weren't too many of you, but there may be some people who, um, who have a fuller bus line and you, wanna, you really wanna minimize that. Well, in order to do that, definitely you wanna have a right, the right bra on. And also patterns are your friend. And this is for this works for a smaller bust line and also somebody who has a fuller bust line. If you put a pattern on, well, if you let's say if you let's do it with a solid first. If you put a solid on in your very small bust line or very large bust line, the eye of the onlooker only has two places to go. Boom, boom, right? Right to your, your bust line. But if you've got a pattern on like I do, the eye can wander. The eye doesn't just focus on right at the solid of the colors. So if you are a smaller bus line, what a pattern does is it actually maximizes a bus line. And if it's a fuller bus line, it actually minimizes it. So that's just kind of a trick that you can use for if you're a smaller bus line or a fuller bus line. Um, the other thing is, just before we move on, is just really understanding your body shape and not wearing clothes that are too snug. I would say, especially when you're in, in the process of losing weight, I would say that we, are, we get so hung up on the size that's written in the tag that's in the back. And you guys, nobody sees the size of your clothes unless you tell them. If you need to go up a size in your clothes, do it. If you need to cut the tag out, then do it. I, I am five foot 11. I'm size 14, 16. I'm hardly, I don't think I'll ever get to a 12 in my whole life. I'm, I have a larger frame. I'm a tall gal and I'm, I'm, I mean, I could lose 10 pounds. I mean, I would like to do that, but here's the thing. I always say sometimes 
Sometimes I just go ahead and cut half the tag out so that I can be a four or a six. And you can do the very same thing. Cut that, cut that one out and just, just go for it. But anyway, those are just a few little tips that you can use um, for dressing your body shape. And that could be a whole other webinar on Sunday because this one takes a long time. All right, I do want to give you a tip though that I think will really help you. I wanted to think of, I thought, what can I give them that they could go home and immediately do? All right, and so this is what I call um, star style, really understanding your star style. And so this has to do with your prints and patterns that you wear, your accessories, and the handbags that you're not getting to carry anywhere right now, but you will be hopefully very soon. But I have them in three categories. So I want you to put in the chat which one you are. Are you a glamour girl, a movie star, or a rock star? So here it is. If you are five foot two and a half or under, you are a glamour girl. If you are five foot three to five seven and a half, you are a movie star. And if you're five eight or over, you're a rock star. All right, so which one are you? So while you're putting it in the chat, oh, I love to see in the chat lighting up that's awesome all right so let me tell you what that means so glamour girls when it comes to prints and patterns and accessories and handbags you're going to go smaller small to medium max you don't want to carry the great big thing because if you do it overpowers you movie stars you're going to go medium to large medium to large prints medium to large accessories medium to large handbags and rock stars the bigger the better. You can go large to oversize. Oh my goodness, I love that you're putting this in the chat. This is so awesome. I can't wait to see what they are. All right, so here's the thing, you guys. I wanna give you, I wanna give you a visual. So imagine a woman walks into a room and she's six foot five. She's really tall and she's 400 pounds, all right? And she has on a dress with teeny tiny little flowers on it. And she has on little baby size hoop earrings, not like my big things, but little tiny little hoop earrings. And she's carrying a tiny little purse. Does she look bigger or smaller than she is? Somebody type that in the chat. Does she look bigger or smaller? She looks bigger because she's overpowering everything that she has on. Now, if she walks into the room with big polka dots or big you know, flowers on her, on her dress, she has a big handbag, she's got big hoop earrings in like I do, she doesn't, it's not that we want her to look smaller, it looks like she knew what she was doing when she got dressed that morning. She dressed, she's dressed in proportion to who she is. So you guys, I want you to go and clean out your jewelry boxes and look at the patterns that are in your, in your closet and look at everything and try them on. And if you're smaller, if you're a glamour girl, maybe you need to get rid of some of those really big prints. If you're a rock star, maybe you get, need to get rid of that tiny handbag that you have. But I want you to test all your accessories and everything up against that. All right. I hope that I hope that was fun for you. I love that. And I love to see when people are on stage and I and we put them up against each other and they and compare. It's so much fun. And one question or one thing let me tell you before, and then we're gonna get to questions, is that um people will say, Well, how do I know what small, medium, and large is? Go to a store when you're allowed, go to a store and hold up, find a purse that you think is small go find a small purse, then go find a really big purse, then find a medium, and then stand in front of the mirror and look at it. And now I'm not talking about the small bag that's like has the really long handle, like the crossover bags. I mean a kind that has, you know, the regular handle. Look at that, because you can find crossover over bags that are tiny, tiny. I'm not talking about the tiniest person in the room. But look and then hold it up in front of you in the mirror. And I think you'll be able to tell instantly which one. All right, so I think uh, we have one more poll for you. Okay, so which of these areas of style do you struggle with? So let's throw up this poll. All right, so proper fitting bra and undergarments, shopping with a plan of action, meaning you're like an impulse buyer, 
knowing what colors work best for you, we already talked about that, or accessorizing properly, not too much or not too little. I wanna see your answers with that. Oh, shopping with a plan, it's kind of, oh, it's pretty close. Shopping with a plan of action, impulse buying, and then the right bra, and then accessorizing, and then knowing what your right colors are. Okay, so let me address the shopping with a, um, the shopping with a plan of action, just briefly, and then um, finding the right bra. Okay, so let's, oops, let's go back there. Okay, so um, finding the right bra. Get a fitter, get a fitting, if you can get a professional fitting. And if you can't, I, um, I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna do this, I'm not gonna be able to demo it for you, but um, what I, what the best way to know what size bra you have or that you should be wearing is, and, and I know a lot of you don't go get a proper fitting and haven't, but if you were to, first of all, stand up and you put, I'm gonna see if I can do this here. I don't know, you're not gonna see my whole self, but if you put your, your elbow, your hand, right, as you dig your elbow into your waist and put your hand straight out in, in front of you, all right? Your, if you get straight out and look in a mirror, your bust line should be seated between the top of your shoulder and your elbow, right in the middle of that. That's where, your, that's where your bust line needs to be seated on your body. So it may be that you just need to pull up the straps, maybe tighten them. And if you haven't gotten a new bra in a year, I would say it's time. Um, the other way, if you wanna measure yourself at home, you can do this. There's two things that you wanna do. You wanna put on a, 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 like a, a, a t-shirt, put on the bra that you have, but put on a, you know, a nice fitting one, like one that's kind of, tight fitting, um, it's, and so you put on a t-shirt and you wanna measure right under the flesh of your bust. So right under where the rib cage is and you wanna pull that, that measuring tape a little bit snug, all right? And write that number down. Let's say that number is a 34, okay? Then you wanna measure right around the fullest part of your bust, making sure that the tape stays straight all the way around, okay? and then you write that number down. So let's say that number is a 36. All right, so number, those two numbers right there are gonna determine now your cup size. So if you're a 34, that means that you're, that's the band size, so that you would be a 34, that's the, that's the bra size you're gonna get. And then there's 34, let's pretend that's, that's ground zero, that's zero and you're gonna count the numbers in between the 34 and the 36. So ground zero is, is, is 34, so 35 is A, 36 is B. So you would be a 34B. Now, if you're a little bit in between, say you're a, a half size in between, then just you're, when you go to the, the store, you're gonna have to try on both bras and make sure that uh, maybe you try on a 34, um, double A and, and um, a 34. And oh, by the way, and if this were like ground zero and this they were the same, like it's 34, 34, you'd be a 34 double A is what you would be. And so every cup size is an inch up. And so you would just, at least that's a baseline for you that you can start with. Um, the other thing I think that we don't realize that is in the, the stores is that especially as you're losing weight, and even when you're at your ideal weight, I think we tend to get a lot of maybe back fat kind of that happens here. And so make sure that the band is wide enough to hold that in, all right? So just so that, that's just one way to look for the right bra. And you always wanna buy a bra that's your skin color. You never wanna wear white undergarments, ever, ever, ever. Because even under white clothes, you always wear nude, color, the same color your skin is what you want to wear. All right, and then um, shopping with a plan of action. I really believe that you need to build a capsule wardrobe. And um, you can look into this on my website. I have something called 27 Hangers. It's how to have 27 pieces in your wardrobe. And it really, it's a video course that um, actually walks you through 
how to have 27 pieces in your wardrobe and it really works we have a facebook group just for 27 hangers and it's only 27 dollars, so it's not a lot but i'm telling you it will help you get yourself to 27 pieces and you do it per season now a couple of weeks ago on my youtube channel i actually showed them how to do a capsule wardrobe out of what's in your drawers at home for staying home so you might want to go see that and practice with that before you even do 27 hangers practice and see if you can build a capsule wardrobe out of the things that you have in your drawer for what you're doing and wearing at home but um it's really it's really a great way to not shop on impulse because when you follow the worksheet that we have a worksheet that comes with it when you follow that you know what you have in your closet and then you put on your needs list and you only shop for that and it's really a, a very fun interesting concept so I hope you'll check that out but also check that video I think that would be fun for you all right so now I think we're gonna go ahead and take some questions and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and come back there we go all right Sherry this has been awesome. So the first question is about hair color. Do you use natural hair color or dyed hair color, dyed color, I guess, to figure out your colors maybe? Yeah. Uh-huh, you gotta use the color that you are now. And when um, color analysis first came into play, we never took that into consideration. And as color analysis has progressed over the years, they realized we have to take hair color into consideration because it's one of the first things people see about you. So you're going to use the color that you are right now. Sounds good. All right. Next question is when shopping for a bra and that you've measured, uh, what style should I look for that best supports the saggy aging look? Uh, well, if you want something that's kind of comfortable, but that has a little bit of support, you might want to look for what they call a t-shirt bra. And it's still going to be comfortable, but it's going to have the rounded, the smooth cups in it so people aren't going to be able to see through. So you might want to start with that. I would start with that. Okay. Um, next question is, what suggestions do you have for life transitions? I went from being a graduate student living in upstate New York, comfortable clothing, jeans, and snow gear, to college professor in DC. Uh, though I love dressing professionally, Talbots and Taylors, I'm struggling with switching into this new identity. Ah, uh, you know what? Figure out your signature style statement. That's key for you. Absolutely key. Because when you can you name those words, then you're going to decide who do you want to be seen as at, at the new workplace. I, I think it's going to do a switch for you. And what you might want to do is have a capsule wardrobe for your casual pieces and a capsule wardrobe just for work and really build that capsule wardrobe around your signature style statement. So you can say, okay, is this me is this me and you might need to hire a stylist really to help you to do that and um you know email me we've got consultants all over the country or i mean right now we're doing it virtually but it may be that you need to really sit with somebody even for an hour to help you really get into that that role great all right i see we have a few questions coming in in chat and i'll get to those but if you could use q a that would be helpful um our next question is about color when you're part gray and part brown i'm thinking they're talking hair <laughs> yeah probably and everybody's going to be part gray and part brown right now i think because nobody's getting to their hairstyles well here's the thing you have to make a decision as to um are you going to let your hair go gray are you going to let it go all the way out or are you going to color it when you can get back to the hairstylist or there are lots of root cover-ups that you can actually use as well like spray on root cover-ups um, in fact i did a youtube video on that like two weeks ago it's called my quarantine favorite things you guys might you might want to go back and look at that because it shows you exactly what to do and so um you know they're about nine dollars you can buy it you know, online and have it delivered to your house and you do it yourself you spray it on but yeah you just it, you got to make a decision which way are you going to go and then test when you do the color test answer accordingly all right so we have another color question um this is from the chat box what about hair color in general should you go more with shades colors 
you were born with. I've been a fake blonde for 10 years, but thinking natural would feel, well, more natural. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite sayings that I, 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 I started saying years ago is I believe that you're most beautiful when you're closest to the way God created you to be. Now, does that mean that when we all go gray, we're supposed to go gray? No, I just mean that if you are coloring your hair and it's so far off of what, how it naturally would be, it's, it's probably maybe test it out. Go, I would say it's best if you're gonna color your hair two to three shades away from what your natural is. And so maybe you should start putting some low lights in and start getting back to where that natural is and see what it's like. Try it out. I did wanna say, uh, as I was researching Sherry, I watched a cool YouTube video that she did about going gray, like how your colors change and everything. So FYI guys out there on her YouTube channel is a really cool one about how the change, your, you know, what is, how do you transition to gray? Um, but let's get on to more questions. I have lipidemia and finding pants that fit is a real struggle. Knees and thighs are very big or so big, but my waist isn't um, a 10 inch difference. She says nothing looks good at me. Also her butt is huge because it sounds like she's, she's my, I relate to that. <laughs> okay. All right. Not Here's you need a product called Invisibelt. Invisibelt is actually, and there are I think four different styles of it, but it is a, a belt that has, it's very long and adjustable. And what happens is that when you put it on, it actually clips flat and it holds your, your britches in place because you wanna buy pants that fit your hips and your thighs, not your waist. All right. So once you do that, then you have all this gate gaping, right? The gap at your waist. So this belt, what it does is it closes it in and flattens the fabric so it doesn't bunch. It's a miracle. And it's, I think it's only like 20, 25 bucks. It is, it will save your life and you can wear it with every single clothing item that you have. And it's not like a decorative one. So it's not like you can even actually put a regular belt over top if you wanted. But it sounds to me like probably with your body shape, you're not wearing um, your shirts tucked in, I wouldn't assume. You're probably wearing tops that are out a little bit. This is perfect for you. I'll get that to you, Helen. Okay. Um, are lip colors limited as we age? I'm 51, so is pink discouraged? No, it's not. It's all based on your color code. What's important is the intensity, the value of it. So whether it's light, medium, or dark, or bright is what's important based on whether you're lighter or darker or brighter coloring. So once you take that color code test, I think that's gonna really, really help you out a lot. Um, and, and then there's a makeup. If you end up buying your color swatches, which are fabric swatches, they go, um, there's actually a makeup guide in there, but I also have a YouTube video on the makeup colors for each of the color codes, so that'll help you too. And by the way, the YouTube is Style Tips with Sherry, S-H-A-R-I, because sometimes you go, they go to the Fashion Meets Faith one. That's not my, that's not these videos. So it's Style Tips with Sherry. All right. Okay. Uh, I am almost, I am now almost white hair, so I embrace my season of life. So going from blonde to white, what color should I now be wearing? And blues, pinks, purples, um, some fresher, think fresh garden colors. She, she wrote another question, red, black, gray, but you didn't say anything about red, black, gray. No, no. They're gonna probably be too dark on you, too, too dark and heavy. Black, you might be able to do as a neutral, um, but you won't be wearing black and red together. You're gonna, you wanna bring up your whole, remember, we're mimicking here what's happening here. Okay, this person is starting a side hustle as a health and wellness coach, and they want to be confident, approachable, life changer. Any tips for signature wardrobe? Sounds like she has her words in there. I know. I was going to say, I see that noun you've got there. Good, good, good job. All right. So what was the last question before we said, what, what's the? 
Well, she just wanted to know, is there, what can she do? Like, what is, what can she do for a signature style? Okay. So two things, get your statement together and then get your colors together. And then make sure because right now, and, and even after you're probably going to be doing a lot of virtual appointments. I'm assuming a lot of virtual coaching. You want to make sure that from here up, this works. You're going to up your makeup a little. You're going to up, even though, you know, you might, you know, natural makeup, that's fine, but you got to get a little brighter cut lipstick. You got to make sure you have a really sharp haircut and colors that, that, that don't go before you, but that coordinate with you. Mm. Okay, cool. All right. Um, I'm in the process of losing weight. I find myself dressing frumpy because I'm unhappy with my appearance. Any tips on how to dress when you're losing weight? I am single and think I'm missing out on potential partner because I'm dressing like I don't care. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say that you want to follow maybe the trends, um, no, kind of know what's happening for the sea. And I know that's probably not, that's probably not the best answer. You would be somebody that honestly, I would think would do well sitting down with somebody for an hour and just really, um, really just saying, okay, let's take a look at you and let's see exactly, let's look at your wardrobe. Number one, I would probably get rid of any clothes, clothing in your closet that you haven't worn in a year. Get rid of it because it's, it's probably out of style. And even if it's a size that you're planning to get back into, it won't be in style then. And so understand your body shape and maybe just get a couple new tops in colors that are great for you and some new accessories. Accessories right around your neckline make all the difference. And you know, there's a brand, a line out there called Paparazzi. It's $5 jewelry. I mean, it, it, it's not expensive. And so um, it's, it's just, it's something, it's something that you, you can do this. You know, you can, you can really do this. Just, just make a decision. That's what you got to do. <laughs> awesome. All right. I'm addicted to colorful infinity scarves to wear with every outfit. I feel it hides my sagging chin, but should I just give them up? By the way, I'm a rock star and gain weight all over. Okay. But, I, but they hate their neck. Suggestions. <laughs> okay. Hi, rock star. All right. So, um, infinity scarves are out of style. So I don't, what I would do, can you sew? If you can sew, what I would probably do is cut them because for those of you who don't know what an infinity scarf is, it's a circle. It's a long circle. It's sewed all the way together. Cut it so it's long, but do this. Oh, I wish I had a scarf in front of me. I don't. All right. So you know what I do have is a blanket. Oh, I'm going to show you. All right, so let's pretend you see the dust flying. All right, and then you're going to take it this way and this way and let it hang down. And make sure that as we're coming into spring, it's a lighter fabric, obviously, because you don't want it to, you know, be heavy on you. But that is one way. Get some lighter weight infinity scarves. And most of the infinity scarves actually are lighter because they're so big and rounded. So try that and then sew up the ends so they're not hanging, you know, ragged. So, or get some necklaces that are maybe more up here. Or you know what else? Forget about the saggy neck. Just go bold and go beautiful. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question is about hair length and does age matter? <sighs> That's a tricky question. Um, there are some people who can wear long hair and look amazing as they're older. And there are some that just can't. But here's what I will tell you. If you have gray or silver hair, please don't wear long hair. If you have gray or long or silver hair, you have to have a short haircut or you're going to look like an old lady with long gray hair. That's, that's, that's where I would go with that. Okay. Uh, moving right along. We have quite a few questions that are coming Ooh, in. Oh, good. Shape and style of eyeglasses for your face. Yeah, yeah. It depends on your face shape. And so um, I wish I could 
pop in a PDF to show you right now. Do I have a YouTube video on that? I don't think I do. Um, it does depend on your face shape. And so I'll, I'll try to do it in, a, in as brief an answer as I can. So when you, when you try to determine what your face shape is, you want to pull all your hair back like this. And then take a pen, a marker, in your mirror and draw the outline like on the mirror, like you see it and see, is it more square? Is it rounded? Is it, so don't, don't fret over this. Like, don't be like, oh my gosh, I have to know exactly. It's really subjective. It really is. Hopefully my hair is back in order. All right. But if you have an oval face, you can pretty much do anything. If you have a square face, I would go opposite, more rounded edges. If you've got a, a square jaw this way, oh, I just said that one, um, rounded, you want to go more square. So you're going against what, what the, the face shape is. Now, here's, let me tell you this. When you pick the frames for your, for your glasses, don't pick wire frames and don't pick like the see-through, like the rimless, because they actually make you look older. So the styles, the trends of, of iframes are with some substance to them. So pick a, a color that you love. I say lay out your swatches, your color swatches, or determine what colors you like. And lay out your swatches and make sure your iframes, when you go shopping, make sure the iframes go with those. So maybe teal is in your colors. And you're like, oh, I like teal. I'm going to wear, you know, lots of teal things. Um, maybe purple. If you're a cool, purples would be beautiful. But, or if you just basic then do like a tortoise shell or a like or a gray tortoise if you're if you're a cool or if you're a light you could do more the the the, the tortoise or the gray tortoise or the the brown tortoise if you're a deep or a warm or a soft even if you're here for the first time and you haven't heard about first place for health i did want to tell you a little bit about us and so for us we are a uh, weight loss, a Christian weight loss ministry. And so you can find more about us at firstplaceforhealth.com or we have a shortcut name, FP, the number four, H.com. And we really are uh, the just at a Christ-centered weight loss program. And we want to are here to help people. Uh, place Christ First is how we get our first place name and uh, just really committed to helping people get together, be in community, place Christ first, and uh, weight loss is the, the, the added benefit, which is wonderful.